Hi there friends, Werner here. Thanks for joining me for another one of my knife reviews. Today we're taking a look at another Italian knife production company, Fox Knives. Um, and uh, we're taking a look at this specific one today. Uh, this is their Fox Tur. Um, now this uh, EDC companion is a collaboration between Fox Knives um, and the Danish custom knife maker uh, and designer Jasper Vox Nyes. Um, that's his, uh, his logo over there. Um, and yeah, the combination between Elmac Steel, uh, solid carbon fiber scales, titanium backspace and pocket clip. Uh, this is a premium gentlemanly folder uh, that belongs in a suit pocket uh, and is sturdy enough and robust enough uh, to be a hardy uh, EDC carry as well. Um, so yes, before I continue, may I please ask her to look um, bottom right corner, you'll see a button, say subscribe, please hit that, uh, please hit like, um, I would really appreciate that, thank you so much. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to dive down, we're going to do a quick size comparison as always, uh, then we're going to do a, uh, uh, we're going to run by the specifications quickly, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the, uh, the blade, we're going to talk about the pivot, uh, what makes it tick, we're going to talk about the handle, handle scales, pocket clip ergonomics, um, action, and then uh, we'll do some final impressions. Right, so let's dive down, let's do some size comparisons. Um, this is a small-ish knife, uh, so let's stay in that, uh, in that kind of range. Um, and we can see here that uh, the Spyderco Delica 4 uh, is a great uh, size comparison. Um, both in uh, in this way um, and in length, uh, they are almost exactly the same. Uh, now we do know that the uh, Spyderco Delica 4 is a small to medium sized knife um, and uh, the Tur over here uh, definitely falls into that bracket for me as well. Uh, let's look at another uh, classic size comparison, uh, the Paramilitary 2, and we can see that it totally dwarfs it out. Um, now the Paramilitary 2, we all know is a is a large full size knife, um, so yes, I will be sticking with my um, with my size gauging here by calling this guy um, a, a a small to medium knife. Uh, let's look at um, at a Kaiser offering. This is the T1. Uh, the T1 to me is more of a medium large size knife, and we can see that um, in 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 their footprint difference. Uh, here's another Chinese offering. This is from We. Um, this is the Natida. Uh, now, Natida we know is a is a large full size knife, and we can see that um, here in the size comparison. Right, let's. Uh, oh yeah, and just for for whatever, there's a one dollar bill. Right, specifications. We've got an overall length of seven inches exactly. Uh, we have got a blade thickness of zero point one four. Now that. Um, coupled with uh, the, the, the very high uh, flat grind will make this guy a great slicer um, but uh, yeah, it's not as thin as the uh, Delica 4 uh, so the blade stock is definitely a little bit uh, a little bit chunkier uh, let's have a look at uh, the PM2 and we can see they're very very similar blade stock uh, that's been used um, let's do a quick millimeter measurement uh, of this guy uh, the blade stock comes in at uh, three and a half uh, millimeters. Uh, let's look at, uh, at at the at the width of the handle. Uh, we are sitting on that's now it's fourteen point eight millimeters. Uh, overall weight on this guy is three point two two ounces. Uh, very very easy in the pocket. Um, you won't even know that it's there. Right, let's dive down. Let's take a look at this guy. First off, let's start with the blade. Uh, we've got a modified drop point, and like I said, a high flat grind. Um, and the steel that's used here uh, is uh, is definitely a super steel, uh, Elmax, uh, and it's, it's produced by Bola Udenholm, um, and is a high chromium, vanadium, and molybdenum uh, alloy steel. Um, it offers high wear resistance, a high compressive strength, superior corrosion resistance, and very good 
dimensional stability um, or the ability to retain its size and form uh, even after taking some abuse. A um, little bit more information about Almax is that it is a powder metallurgy uh, based production steel. Uh, basically, uh, it's a method of blending uh, fine powdered materials and pressing them into the desired shape um, and then heating it uh, to a sinter uh, and, uh, or, 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 or to bond uh, the material. Uh, so absolutely stellar stuff being used here. Uh, you don't often see that. Um, so yes, great uh, that, 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 that um, it's included in, in, in this premium package. Uh, we've got uh, a sharpening choil uh, going straight into a belly uh, for some nice slicing action. Like I said, the modified drop point, um, nice flat grind. Um, and uh, we can see Fox's logo. Um, I think very, very discreetly uh, done. A uh, laser engraved on the blade. Um, and uh, on the back, also very discreet, we've got um, uh, uh, the, the, the Danish uh, the designer Jasper Fox Knives' uh, uh, logo, or his branding. Uh, and we've got Fox Knives, um, and that is uh, Maniago. What is that? Maniago, Italy, Elmex, FX528. Right. Now, moving back, we can see that um, it is a, a thumb stud deployer. It's ambidextrous, so you can use it left or right. Uh, there's a Torx bit here at the back where you can uh, disassemble it. Right, moving along the spine. Uh, first off, we just want to go back to the point. We can see that there's quite, a, quite, quite enough uh, meat behind that point uh, for some piercing action. Right, so moving back. Uh, we can see that there's some jimping um, and feeling that jimping um, it is fairly aggressive not overly aggressive um, I think done just in the right way um, and it comes through uh, from the spine of the blade obviously into the area um, of the handle uh, so that will be a very nice thumb rest area um, and holding it um, yes definitely that jimping is in the absolutely correct spot right looking at the pivot uh, we can see here that um, uh, not not overly designy, uh, fairly straightforward. Um, it's got a dome on it, um, so you're going to use your Torx bit to to disassemble this guy. Uh, same thing happening on the back. Um, and uh, what we've got is um, we've got phosphored uh, bronze washers, um, and that offers a very smooth blade deployment um, experience. Uh, so that's what makes it tick. Uh, so we can see here. Uh, that it is a liner lock and the liner has been nestled um, nice, nicely and uh, uh, nestled and recessed um, into the back uh, carbon fiber scale. Um, the front one um, is just one solid chunk um, of carbon fiber. Now lock up on this guy uh, leaves a lot to be desired as you can see there. Um, it's sitting on about uh, yeah, 8 or 10 percent um, and that to me is, uh, is, is, is going into dicey territory. Um, I'm going to show you when we're going to be talking about um, the ergonomics. If you grip this guy too tight, you disengage that lock and this blade will come right down onto your fingers. So yes, that is not very cool, um, but yeah, definitely something to take note of. Uh, we can see here that it's an open backed hollow construction uh, for easy cleaning and maintenance. Um, looking at uh, at the handles, uh, not overly thick, uh, fits very, very comfortably into the hand um, and beautiful uh, carbon fiber um, that's been concaved on both sides. Uh, so it's nicely rounded um, and yes, fits into the palm of your hand uh, beautifully. It just melts in there. Uh, so that's very, very well done. Um, cutouts here, we can see here this, this ergonomic uh, uh, cutout uh, also resembles um, the, uh, the the PM2. Uh, we can see that kind of shape, um, and uh, yes, definitely fits into the hand like a glove. Um, going back, we can see two uh, body screws, and that is to hold together our titanium uh, backspacer. Um, we've got two models uh, of this guy. Uh, it comes in this, this, this is obviously the, 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 the satin blade. 
um, and it comes standard with a uh, with a with a with a copper anodized uh, uh, titanium backspacer. Uh, now this one has had some some custom work done to it. Um, so yeah, we got some blue happening on the side, and then we got the copper at the top. Also, same thing with the pocket clip. Uh, we've got the copper on the top and the blue on the side. Uh, but out of the factory, you're going to get one that comes with a black PVD treated uh, black blade. Um, that one comes standard with a solid blue uh, anodized titanium uh, backspacer as well as pocket clip. Right. And now this backspacer also stands out very proudly. Um, and it does complete... Uh, the angles uh, of the butt of the knife here. So I think it fits in beautifully uh, with the overall aesthetic. Um, and even this guy over here can be used in a tactical situation. Uh, you can use it to uh, to go for a temple hit. Um, so yes, that we can, we can also use it for that. But obviously it's meant for your, um, uh, for your, for your lanyard. Right, looking at the pocket clip, uh, we can see here that... Um, Nothing too standard about this. This has been a uh, uh, 3D milled um, and CNC machined. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some thought behind that pocket clip. Um, I don't think it is too long, too short. I think it's going to ride in your pocket very well. I'm not necessarily a deep rider, uh, so you're going to have that little bit sticking out. But honestly, to me personally, I, I don't really enjoy a deep rider. I like that little purchase uh, uh, length over there so you can go in and you can just grip it with your finger and pull it out of your pants. Um, so yes, I do enjoy that. So nothing wrong whatsoever with that pocket clip. Uh, it's got a nice good amount of, uh, of, of, of tension to it. Um, so yes, great stuff there. Um, let's quickly go through to the ergonomics. Uh, now we can see that there's only one uh, choil design, uh, nothing for forward. So this would be your basic hold. Um, and if you're gripping the guy like this, you can see I'm not running out of real estate at all. Very, very comfortable grip. Um, the, 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 the concaveness of the uh, handle scales really melts into your hand very nicely. Um, if I really bear down on this guy, um, I'm not feeling any, any, any serious uh, hot spots. Maybe a little bit coming off the clip. But um, what I wanted to show you here is, uh, is this, um, yeah very substandard uh, lockup that you've got here um, if you're really uh, bearing down on it you can see there that um, I'm actually disengaging that lock so yeah that's not too cool um, anyway but yeah this this is a very very comfortable grip you can use this area over here I suppose if you want to sneak up on it and just use it as a, as a, as a resting area if you really want to choke up on the guy um, and do some fine detail work um, let's look at uh, blade centering uh, it is just a, 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 a hair uh, to the uh, to the to this side over here. Um, I, I'm sure that if you if you play a little bit with that pivot, which I have not done, um, you can get this guy to center up properly. Uh, let's look at um, at blade play and lock rock, um, and uh, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. It is solid as a tank. Um, it's not moving at all. Right, let's look at deployment in action. As I said, um, it's running on uh, phosphor bronze uh, washers, um, and that really gives us a very, very nice, smooth uh, deployment. Um, I'm busy using uh, the thumb studs here and this area of my middle finger for a spidey flick, um, and that to me is the most comfortable way and the most fun and addictive way of deploying this guy. You can obviously use it for a... Uh, for, 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 for what is intended, for a thumb stud and for a thumb flick. Uh, you can uh, pinch it and go for a slow roll. Um, so you can do that. Uh, let's see it fall. Uh, this blade is obviously not very heavy, um, so I don't think we can really expect it to, uh, to be a free faller on us, but with a little bit of help, um, it falls right back into that detent. Detent strength to me um, is a little bit on the soft side. Um, I think that uh, it could be dialed in just a little bit more uh, with a little bit more tension on that lock bar uh, to go in this area. Yeah, and that will also increase your increase your 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 detent strength. Right, friends, I think uh, that is pretty much it. Um, what uh, I normally do is if I 
after I've, I've, I've uploaded the video and uh, I've thought to myself, oh, damn, you know, I forgot to say this, forgot to say that. Um, I'll always include that um, in the description below. Uh, but yes, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, please hit like, please leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Uh, but uh, yeah, from Cape Town, South Africa, it is a very good day to you. Cheers.